from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with digital coverage of Mirantis Launchpad 2020. Brought to you by Mirantis. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman and this is theCUBE's coverage of Mirantis Launchpad 2020. And always love when we get to be able to talk to the practitioners that are using some of the technologies here. Uh, one of the interesting things we've been digging into is Lens, uh, the, the IDE in this space, uh, as it's being referred to. So happy to welcome to the program uh, Mori Paksula. Uh, he is the founder and chief technology officer at supervisor.com. Mori, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me. So if you could just, uh, you know, help us understand, uh, you know, uh, your company, as I said, supervisor.com. Um, what, what's the background as the founder? What was kind of the impetus uh, to creating that business? Too? Sure. So um, supervisor is like super simple because we believe and we know that the only way to test websites, if they can handle load, for example, e-commerce sites on Black Friday or when you are just about to make a product launch or that kind of stuff is just by sending real web browsers to the site that actually click and scroll and do all the same things as real users will do. But, and, and like our secret thing is that we can do it like before Black Friday. So if somebody wants to simulate, if they can handle like 2000, users or 5,000 users, then they can use supervisor.com to make it happen like today. So, so uh, I, I'm just curious, uh, you know, the, the concern always is about the DDoS attacks and, and the like. Uh, uh, do, do, do you help companies along that line too, or is it more the, uh, uh, the, the, the testing for proper traffic and we leave uh, the security aspect uh, to somebody else? Yeah, well, like with any load testing tool, uh, you have to verify yourself somehow. And with us, it's super easy because we are integrated with Google Analytics. And if you uh, authorize us to uh, read your Google Analytics data, then we know that you are allowed to test your site. Wonderful. Well, as I said in the lead, uh, you're, you're using Lens. Uh, uh, my understanding, you've been using it uh, since, since the early day. Of, of course, a, a technology that was closed source, Mirantis has. Uh, has acquired that in, in the team. Uh, it's now also open source. So if you could bring us back to, you know, how did you get involved with Lens? What was the, you know, the, the problem statement that it helped, uh, it helped you resolve? Yeah, sure. Uh, so the history super briefly is that Lens was developed by this uh, startup called Contena. It's a Finnish startup and they made a couple of attempts in container orchestration, like before Kubernetes and uh, then Kubernetes came and they just felt like Kubernetes is super hard to kind of uh, visualize or like understand what's going on because you have these containers flying around, you have nodes going in, going out. So they built this lens and then uh, since I've been working with those guys from 2015 or so, I was like, one of the first outside users, or probably the first user outside of the company. So, so, so that, 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 that's pretty neat uh, that you had that, um, you know, that, that, that project that they were doing. Um, as an early user, you know, give us a little bit uh, of, of that journey. Uh, what does it enable uh, for, for, for your company? Um, you know, how's it expanded from kind of the early use cases to where it is today? Yeah, so, uh, if you're using Kubernetes traditionally, or like how most of the people who haven't yet heard about Lens use it is by or from the command line. So that's where you use kubectl or kube control. Uh, you say kubectl get pod, and then you get a listing of pods. But the problem is that uh, all that data is stale on the screen. So if you try to, for example, for example, delete a pod, and you issue kubectl delete pod, blah, 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 blah. And then you hit enter and it, the bot already, it might be gone. So Lens makes like everything real time. And like, if you try to delete something with Lens, you move your mouse on top of the pod. And if it's getting deleted, you notice it because it just disappears from your screen and, and like, it's not there anymore. And 
I think that's like huge perform, uh, productivity boost in a way that how you can like get more and more stuff done every day as, as this kind of like when you're a developer or sysadmin or whatever, you need to kind of like see what's happening in a cluster and, and how the nodes and pods are doing and, and that. So back to your question where you asked like, how has it evolved? Uh, Lens, it's like, nowadays it's super stable. It handles uh, big workloads very well. Uh, in the very, very early on, uh, they had some performance issues with like, like large clusters. For example, when supervisor, when we run a load test with, for example, 10,000 concurrent web browsers, so basically what we have in Kubernetes is we have 10,000 pods. And then when you connect something like Lens to it, it just like started to spin up my fans on the, on the laptop and eating all the RAM. So I helped them a lot with my special use case of running like super big uh, kind of ephemeral workloads there. Yeah, it's, 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 it's an interesting discussion. And in the whole uh, you know, container space, there's all that discussion of, of scale. Um, you know, of course, everybody thinks back to Google uh, and, and how they used it. So we know it can go really big, but, um, you know, environments, I needed to be able to work really small or uh, use cases like yours. I needed to be able to, you know, first use that, 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 that usage uh, when you need it and go back on that elasticity that we hope for uh, in, in cloud. So uh, I'm curious, uh, any, uh, what, what's your expectation with it, you know, going open source, coming into Mirantis as a, as a long-time user of it, um, you know, what, 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 what do you expect to see? Uh, well, I, I think like uh, Mirantis offers the right kind of home for the product because they really get what's happening in the space. And uh, I think their like commercial offering on top of the open source will be around authentication. That's what like kind of understood from the press release. And I think it makes sense because like developers don't want to pay for these kind of tools. And there are other tools that are uh, commercial. And even if it's like just 100 bucks per year, I think that's, that's still, that's not going to work out with most of the developers. And, and you kind of need this kind of long tail developer adoption for this kind of product to succeed. And I think that like the, that's kind of like authentication, like like centralized auth and like who can see what and that kind of stuff. It doesn't like affect uh, most of the startups or uh, indie devs, but like for any company who's doing like real business, it, those are the features that are needed. And and when you use that uh, the product for business, then I think it makes sense to pay also. Yeah, no, absolutely. There's always that that, that challenge. Uh, developers, of course, love open source tools uh, if they can use them. Uh, and you know, the, the 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 packaging, the monetization isn't a question for you. It's uh, uh, you know, for, for, from for the Mirantis team. Uh, what would you uh, say to your peers out there, people that are in this space? You know, what are the areas that they say, oh, um, you know, if I have this type of environment, or if I have type, uh, uh, if I have this this team. Uh, this is what Lens uh, will really be awesome for me. What, what, what are some of the things that you would uh, recommend to your peers out there from, from all the usage that you've done? Yeah. So let's say three things. The first thing is what I already mentioned, the real timeness, that everything updates live. The second thing is the, the integrated uh, metrics. So you can, for example, follow how much memory or CPU something is consuming, it's super helpful when you want to like understand what's really going on and how much resources something is taken. And then the third thing uh, is that uh, Lens is great for debugging because once you have deployed something and something is kind of off and it's kind of hard to reproduce locally, especially with this kind of uh, microservice architecture, whatever what you might have, is that you can just like go inside of any pod or node instantly from the UI. You don't have to like, again, you don't have to use kubectl, blah, 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 blah. And, and you are just like in there also because you are already in the, but it's the fourth thing is that if you manage multiple Kubernetes clusters, it's just super easy to accidentally connect to the wrong cluster. 
but like if you have this kind of visual tool where you can see in I'm I'm in this uh, I'm in my production cluster or I'm in my staging cluster and you make the selection like visually there then all the cube CTL and everything works just against that uh, cluster so I think that's like very helpful so that you don't actually accidentally delete something from production for example Wonderful. Uh, l l last question I have for you, either Lens specifically or kind of the, the, the ecosystem around it. What what would be on your wish list uh, for, as I said, either Lens specifically or to you know manage your environments uh, surrounding that. Uh, you know, what what would you be asking kind of Marantis and and the the the, the broader ecosystem for? Um, I know that. Well, let me think. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, first of all, I have like maybe 50, 60 issues still open at GitHub that I have opened there. So that, that's like my wish list. But like, if you take a, like longer term, I think um, it would just be great if you could actually like start uh, deployments from Lens. There are a bunch of deployment tools like customize and and help but again if you just want to get something running quickly i think uh integrating that to lens would be like super good just you would just like click like i want to deploy this app that's that's also something I'm, I'm looking forward to yeah absolutely everybody wants that simplicity all right well hey thank you so much uh, gr great to hear the feedback uh we I always talk about the people that develop code as well as you know the people that do the beta testing and the feedback so critically important to the the maturation and development of, of everything in this space so uh, thanks so much for joining us all right thank you stay tuned for more coverage from morantis launchpad 2020 i'm Stu miniman and thank you for watching the cube